Hey everyone, welcome back to Threducation. In this video, we're going to be talking about the style evolution of Tyler the Creator. Just to clarify, we will be talking a bit about his journey through the music industry, but the focus is going to be on how his sense of fashion has changed over the course of his career. And if you ask me, Tyler has had one of the most interesting style evolutions out of any rapper. The way that he dressed at the beginning of his career is completely different from the way that he dresses now, and today we're going to be breaking down how that happened, as well as some of his best fits along the way. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is the style evolution of Tyler the Creator. In 1991, Tyler was born in Ladera Heights, California. His interest in music began at a very early age as he started listening to musicians like Erica Badu, D'Angelo, and Pharrell. In fact, it was seeing Pharrell play piano on behind-the-scenes DVD footage that made Tyler want to learn to play it himself. As time went on, he realized that he wanted to try his hand at becoming a musician, and so in 2007, he joined forces with the likes of Haji Beats, Left Brain, Casey Veggies, and Jasper Dolphin to form Odd Future Wolfgang Kill Them All, better known as Odd Future. Together, they began putting out music including the Odd Future Tape Volume 1, which came out in 2008, and over time, other members began joining the group. This included but was not limited to Frank Ocean, Taco, Earl Sweatshirt, Domo Genesis, Mike G, Knockel Smith, Sid the Kid, and Lionel. As you can tell, the group was pretty big, but I should note that not everyone in Odd Future was a musician. More than anything, it was just a group of kids from LA who would skate, ride bikes, and mess around with making beats. But that all changed on December 25th of 2009, because that is when Tyler released his debut mixtape, Bastard. He had been working on the mixtape here and there for several years by the time that it was released, and when it finally came out, it created a fair amount of buzz online. Some of this buzz was thanks to the album's unique sound, but it was also thanks to Tyler's controversial lyrics. His dark and aggressive tone led many to classify the mixtape as horrorcore rap, and while some appreciated it, others reduced it to nothing more than shock value. Whatever the case may be, it did get a lot of people talking, and it was even ranked as number 32 on Pitchfork's Best 50 Albums of the Year list. That may not sound too crazy, but remember that this was the debut mixtape of an 18-year-old kid making beats in his room. Now it's not like the project catapulted him into fame, and he would even continue working his job at Starbucks throughout part of 2010, but what it did do was move him closer to the spotlight, and that's why many of our early photos of Tyler are from this time period. So if we take a look at some of these photos, the main thing that jumps out is that he dresses like a skater. And that makes sense because as I said, him and the other members of Odd Future were very into skating. For the most part, this meant graphic tees, vans, and skinny jeans, but what stands out to me is the amount of Supreme he's wearing. Supreme is of course a popular skate brand, but he can be seen wearing it in just about every single photo. So obviously, he was to some extent already interested in style, and I have to think that a lot of that came from being a member of the skate scene. But there is one other thing that stands out to me in this photo. Again, he's wearing Supreme, but you'll also notice that he's wearing a customized grey hoodie. As you can see, he took some Sharpies and wrote the word Wolf in reference to the name Odd Future Wolfgang. And the reason that I bring this up is that it's really the first time we see him customizing clothes in his own unique style. The way that he stylized the word pretty much sums up his whole aesthetic back then. Colorful, wacky, and at the same time gritty. This was still very early on, but he was clearly beginning to develop his own unique look, and in retrospect, this was just the beginning. In February of 2011, Tyler released his single Yonkers, and it changed everything. Like I said before, he was already getting some attention online, but the music video for the song got everyone's attention. The first thing that I want to talk about is that in this video, you can see Tyler wearing a rather eccentric short sleeve collared shirt and a five panel Supreme hat. As we already know, he was a big fan of Supreme, and these five panel hats would become a staple in his wardrobe, as well as a staple of the Odd Future movement. Now even though it's just a hat, I don't want to downplay its significance here, because there's something you have to remember. Yonkers went extremely viral thanks to its grimy beat, vulgar lyrics, and provocative music video. So this was his first real introduction to the public eye, and he made that introduction wearing Supreme. Fans took notice, and so did Supreme. This was around the time that they started giving him free pieces, and from this point forward he pretty much became one of the faces of the brand. In fact, he raps about getting Free Supreme in the opening track of his debut studio album Goblin, which released in May of 2011, so we know that it was at the forefront of his mind. 
As much as he loved Supreme, it wasn't the only brand you'd see him wearing, and this is where things really start to get interesting. In 2011, when Odd Future was really starting to take off, they developed one of the strongest cult followings imaginable. Earlier I made a reference to what I call the Odd Future movement, and that's really what it was. Their music sounded different, they dressed different, and they went against the grain in just about every way possible. Whether or not you were a fan, there was absolutely no denying that they were the most interesting thing happening in rap at the time. So a lot of kids, myself included, wanted to be involved in this so-called Odd Future movement, and one of the easiest ways to feel involved was dressing like the members of the group. This set off a wave of kids, skaters and non-skaters alike, that began wearing Supreme, five-panel hats, bright colors, vans, basically anything and everything they'd see Tyler wearing. That's when Odd Future saw an opportunity to make their own clothing, and that's exactly what they did. Now technically speaking, Odd Future the brand really started off as tour merch. They printed a few t-shirts with their signature donut logo and would sell them at concerts, but over time they expanded their offering to include a few other pieces, and before long it had grown into a true brand. It had grown so much in fact, that in 2011 they hosted an Odd Future pop-up shop on Fairfax in LA, which happens to be the same street that Supreme's LA store is located on. Even though the pop-up was only supposed to last a few weeks, it ended up being so wildly successful that they decided to keep it open permanently. And so that is how we got the Odd Future store on Fairfax. This was a major turning point for Tyler and the crew, because they went from being influencers to being tastemakers. They were no longer just wearing whatever they thought was cool, but instead they were now making whatever they thought was cool. And if you're curious what that looked like, it was a lot of donuts, cats, and tie-dye. And listen, I'm not here to tell you that Odd Future merch was the gold standard of streetwear back in 2011, but what I am telling you is that the fans went crazy for this stuff. Yes, a lot of the pieces were cool, but more than anything else, owning the merch was just a way to let the world know you were into Odd Future. And trust me, I know, because I had one of these donut shirts, and I walked around trying to show it off the way that people today walk around trying to show off their V-Loan shirts. Overall, there was no denying the success of Odd Future's brand. As they grew, they formed a partnership with Vans, and then, in an effort to expand, they began selling their clothes at Zoomies. At first, hearing that might make you think that they were selling out, but you have to remember that at the end of the day, it kind of was just merch, and what they really wanted was to get it into the hands of as many fans as possible. So yes, the brand did lose a bit of its exclusivity, but that's alright because as it turns out, Tyler had something else up his sleeve. In June of 2011, he officially launched a new brand called Golf Wang. The whole group had worked on the Odd Future merch, but Golf Wang, a play on the name Wolfgang, was really meant to be Tyler's personal passion project, and his intention was for it to be somewhat of a higher-end clothing line. It still shared many similarities to Odd Future merch, but this time around Tyler wanted to treat it like a real brand. And that's why he partnered up with graphic designer Phil Toselli, who became the brand's lead art director. And together they would create full seasonal collections and release professionally shot lookbooks. If you go to golfwing.com, which I will link in the description, you can actually go through every lookbook the brand has ever put out, so definitely go check that out if you're interested. Now between 2011 and 2012, when Golfwing was first starting out, Tyler was still wearing a ton of Supreme and a ton of Odd Future merch. But in 2013, the year that he released his album Wolf, we started to see him almost exclusively in Golfwing. In fact, on both the official album cover and the alternate album cover, he's wearing a Golf Wang hat, and in the music videos for this album, he's mostly wearing Golf Wang products. So it's safe to say that at this point in time, he had entered a new stage in his style evolution. Under Golf Wang, he now had the freedom to make and wear whatever he wanted, and as it turns out, his fans wanted it too. As seems to happen with just about everything that Tyler does, Golf Wang quickly developed a cult following, and some bigger names in the industry started to take notice. That's why, in 2013, he partnered with Vans to release four pairs of Golf Wang branded shoes. Now this collab may seem fairly simple, but you have to understand that this was quite the full circle moment for Tyler. Having grown up skating, his shoe of choice had always been Vans, and even at this stage in his career, that was pretty much all he was wearing. So for him to now have his own Vans collaboration was a major accomplishment. At the same time, this collab was a major accomplishment for the brand because it helped push the name Golfwang further into the mainstream, and it set the course for the explosion and popularity that would take place in the next few years. In 
In 2014, Golfwing and Vans released a few more Vans, this time in more eye-grabbing colorways, and then in 2015, the year that Tyler released his album Cherry Bomb, they teamed up again but decided to mix things up by adding more interesting color blocking, a checkered pattern, and a golf logo to the tongue. I'll also note that the insoles of the shoe featured the now iconic Golfwing flame print, which first made an appearance in the spring-summer 2015 collection, and this print was actually featured on the cover art for Cherry Bomb. All over prints are something that the brand really specializes in, and it seems as if each season we see a new one. Whether it's the flame print, polka dots, cheetah print, or perhaps something even more out of the box. Now speaking of out of the box, in 2016, Tyler did something that he had never done before. He hosted a fashion show. This came as a surprise to some people, because even though he runs his own brand, he has in the past said that he finds the world of fashion disgusting, so I guess you could say he's not the type of guy you'd expect to see at Fashion Week. Regardless, Tyler wouldn't do something if he wasn't going to put his heart into it, and that's exactly what he did. Trust me when I say that I've seen a fair amount of fashion shows, and Tyler's was genuinely very impressive, especially considering that it was his first time doing one. There were a number of skits integrated with pre-recorded videos, live skating, a live musical performance, and to top it all off, at the very end of the show, he made a huge announcement. He was starting his own shoe company. For some context here, everything appeared to have been going great with Vans, and you can even see a number of Vans in the show, but as we now know, there was some tension building behind the scenes. Tyler would later confirm that he discontinued his relationship with Vans because they were limiting his creativity, and that's why he decided to create his own shoe company, Golf Le Fleur. In fact, in the opening skit of the fashion show, Tyler is picking an outfit out of his closet, and you can actually see him skip over his golf wing Vans before deciding on a previously unseen pair. As we would find out at the end of the show, this pair was the first in what would become a long line of collaborations between Golf Le Fleur and Converse. So let's backtrack a little bit to understand how this happened. When Tyler first decided to make his own shoe, he wanted to do it independently, and so he hired an overseas manufacturer to create the first samples. This didn't go far, however, because when he got the samples back, they were basically unwearable. And for a brief moment, it was seeming like this idea of his wasn't going to work out. But then, none other than Pharrell Williams came to save the day. Tyler and Pharrell are close friends and collaborators, so when Pharrell learned that Tyler was struggling to make a shoe, he introduced him to Paul Middleman, the creative director of apparel at Converse. More than anything else, the point of this introduction was for Tyler to seek some advice from someone with experience in the industry, but after talking a bit, they saw an opportunity to work together, and so that is how their partnership began. The first shoe to come out of this collab was the Golf Le Fleur 1 Star, and let me just say it was an instant hit. He took a classic silhouette, the Converse 1 Star, and really made it his own, with the most notable feature being the flower on the side of the shoe. The name Le Fleur is French for the flower, and from the very beginning, flowers have been a key part of Golf Le Fleur's branding. I'll quickly mention that it hadn't been released yet, but he put these shoes out while he was working on his 2017 album Flower Boy, so I guess you could say that this was sort of a hint of things to come. Now, since the original One Star came out, we've seen several variations in both color and material, as well as additional models including the Chuck 70 and most recently the Giano. In my personal opinion, this is one of the best partnerships in the shoe game right now. The materials are always insane, the colorways are always perfect, and every small detail down to the stitching is carefully crafted. If nothing else, this is just proof of what Tyler can do when you give him the green light, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this partnership evolves in the coming years. Maybe we'll even see some new partnerships as well, like the recent Golf Le Fleur Lacoste collab. And hey, this is just a shot in the dark, but personally, I'd really like to see Tyler work with Nigo. The two of them have a relationship that dates back to as far as 2013, and Nigo's brand, Human Made, seems to perfectly complement the aesthetic of Golf Le Fleur. In fact, in 2020, Nigo gave some of his closest friends personalized varsity jackets that read I Know Nigo, and Tyler was fortunate enough to receive one of these jackets with his name embroidered in it. So obviously the two of them have to some extent been in communication recently, and I think that we can all agree that we'd love to see them work together. So by the end of 2017, Tyler had taken his brand Golf Wang to new heights, he had his first fashion show, and he'd launched his own shoe company. Refusing to settle, however, he was yet again about to enter a new stage in his style evolution. Everyone who steps foot on the red carpet at the Grammys gets dressed up for the occasion, but in 2018, Tyler really stole the show. 
He pulled up wearing a customized pair of golf Lafleur Converse, a blue trench coat, a Louis Vuitton monogram scarf, and perhaps most notably, a Russian fur cap known natively as an Ushenka. This fit went viral as soon as it hit the internet, both because it's an objectively cool outfit, and because it was a side of Tyler that we had never really seen before. Wearing an Ushenka was a far cry from his typical five panel hat, but the part that really got everyone talking was when he took the hat off to reveal his leopard print inspired hair. After this appearance at the Grammys, and during the lead up to his 2019 album Igor, we would see Tyler moving even further away from his streetwear roots as he began wearing chinos, sweaters, cardigans, flat caps, bucket hats, and even full suits. He basically just started dressing like a super classy old guy, and hey, I'm not knocking it. I actually really like the direction that Tyler's style has been going in, I just think it's crazy that this is the same guy who was wearing Supreme Box logos and Vans just a few years earlier. Now the interesting question here is what inspired this drastic change in style? Well, we know it wasn't a stylist because he said publicly that he doesn't have a stylist, but it had to have been something, and one simple explanation could be that he's just maturing. Tyler will always be Tyler, but there's no denying that a lot has changed over time. And if you look at the way that he dresses, the music he makes, and the way that he carries himself today at the age of 30, it's almost hard to believe that it's the same 19 year old kid that made Yonkers nearly a decade ago. So yes, I do think that getting older has played a part in his style evolution, but why exactly is it moving in the direction that it is? It's obviously very inspired, but where is this inspiration coming from? Well again, this is a shot in the dark, but I'm really starting to think that Tyler is turning himself into a character from a Wes Anderson film. Now if you're not familiar with Wes Anderson, that might sound a bit crazy, and even if you are familiar with Wes Anderson, that might sound a bit crazy, but allow me to explain. Wes Anderson is an American filmmaker who's best known for movies like The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Royal Tenenbaums, and Moonrise Kingdom. The stories told in these movies are by themselves fantastic, but the thing that Anderson is really known for is his attention to detail and ability to create stunning visuals. I mean literally every single frame in one of his movies looks like it could be the movie poster, so it goes without saying that people are really attracted to the aesthetic of his work. Now I just mentioned that Anderson pays great attention to detail, and that includes fashion. Each and every character is carefully suited to fit the role that they're playing, and by giving them their own signature pieces like a headband or a beanie, it makes them much more relatable to the audience. So where does Tyler fit into all of this? Well let me start by saying that Tyler has been praising Wes Anderson for years as one of his favorite directors. Many people even believe that his video for the song See You Again was a direct reference to the Wes Anderson film The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, which could of course explain why the music video is staged out at sea. We would see even more music videos in this style with the release of Igor, and I'm talking symmetrical wide shots, warm color palettes, even the architecture. It all screams Wes Anderson. And if you still aren't convinced, Tyler showed up to the 2020 Grammys dressed as a lobby boy in reference to Zero the lobby boy from the Grand Budapest Hotel. However, rather than dressing in purple, he decided on an outfit that matched the color of the hotel itself. So back to Igor, the reason that this album was an interesting period in Tyler's style evolution is that he literally got into character and played a role. As Igor, he would wear different colored suits, but would always keep the signature bowl cut and glasses. Obviously this isn't how he dresses in real life, but it's an example of him using style to help tell the story of his album. And right now, he's preparing to do just that once again. On June 16th of 2021, Tyler released a music video for his new song Lumberjack, and subsequently announced that his album, Call Me If You Get Lost, will be releasing on June 25th. Yet again, it appears as if Tyler is creating another character, or at least some sort of alias. On the cover art for the album, we see an ID for Tyler Bodler. The ID shows his real birth date and his real place of birth, but from what I've read so far, the name Baudelaire is a reference to the French poet Charles Baudelaire, and in every visual we've seen so far, Tyler's wearing a blue Ushenka that reminds me a lot of the one he wore back at the 2018 Grammys. Other than the Ushenka though, it seems like he's wearing a lot of the same everyday pieces we've seen him wearing in the past few years, including chinos, cardigans, and leopard print shirts. I'm really looking forward to hearing the album, but I'm also really looking forward to learning more about this Tyler Baudelaire character and seeing what Tyler chooses to do with his style. He's definitely building some sort of narrative, but we just don't know what that is quite yet. And after the discussion we just had about Wes Anderson, I'm wondering if someday Tyler may even release his own film. 
I'm not saying that it's going to happen with this album, but it's something that he's talked about in the past, and with his affinity for storytelling, I'm sure it's something that he'd be great at. So that is just about everything I wanted to touch on for the style evolution of Tyler the Creator. If you can't tell already, I'm a huge fan, and judging by how many of you asked for this video, I know that a lot of you are as well. Regardless, hopefully you learned something new, because all things considered, it's a pretty crazy story. Tyler went from a kid drawing on hoodies with sharpies to building a cult following, becoming one of the faces of Supreme, launching his own merch, creating his own clothing line Golf Wang, partnering with major companies like Vans and Converse, hosting his own fashion show, and all the while putting out critically acclaimed albums. Anyways, that is all for this video. Let me know which style evolution I should do next. And as always, if you liked this video and want to see more like it, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and other than that, I will see you next time. That was cool. Um, well, I guess we're done. Uh, so, thanks. Wait, wait, I got, I'm about to talk, I'm about to talk. Wait, I wanna talk. Shit.